Good morning, and welcome back to another Talklets conversation. There are some conversations that need a lot of background, if you will, a lot of introductory, a lot of research. But for this particular conversation, it's going to be right in front of us. I do mean right in front of us. Talk to me the way you talk to Jesus. When we're having a conversation, when you're speaking to me, could you please speak to me in the same demeanor, the same respect, that same tone, that same delivery that you speak to Jesus? There's been said that there's 2.3 billion Christians, believers in the world, out of 8 billion people. Now, that's a beautiful thing if that's true. Um, but I think Christianity has become this cool buzzword <laughs> where everyone says they're, they're a believer, they're a Christian, but there's no fruit. They're not living the life. They speak of it, but they're not walking it. They're not teaching it. What if that two billion people were to start talking to one another every single day the way they speak to Jesus, the way they should speak? <laughs> to Jesus. You realize that when you go in prayer, you, you humble yourself. You, I mean, you, you have a meekness, a modest about yourself. I mean, you're bowing before the Lord. So, so, so you have yourself in a position that honors him, that reverence him. What if we came up out of prayer and we were to speak to everyone that way 24-7? You see, some of you have what I call two different languages. You've got a G language for Jesus in your closet. And you got a language for everyone else outside of your closet. And that's a problem. That's a big problem. You've got to treat everyone the same. You shouldn't have no respect to person. Not one. Jesus tells us in the book of Matthew, I think it's 18 and 3, that if you don't change or convert yourself to be like one of these little children, you won't see heaven. And so we've got to make sure that we see ourselves as children and stop seeing ourselves as something different. Because in the eyes of Jesus, that's what he sees us. He sees us as his children. I pray that we start changing and start speaking to one another the way we speak to Jesus. Your family, your wife, husbands, your wife is your customer. Your, your daughter, your son, those are your customers. Wives, your husband, he's your customer. And so you should treat your customer with great respect. If you're pouring into them, they become an asset, not a liability. They become a profit. They become an increase versus a debt. And that's where we should be. That's where you should be. Women. Wives. When was the last time you spoke to your husband the way you speak to Jesus? <laughs> when was the last time you weren't ticked off, you weren't irritated, you weren't bothered by him speaking to you? When was the last time you reverence your husband, that man who's supposed to be the priest of your home, the, the Lord of your house. When was the last time you spoke to him the way you speak to Jesus? You see, we become so common with one another, we stop speaking to each other with the respect and dignity. But if you were to take this, we were to unify all 2.3 billion <laughs> Christians, this world would explode with believing what we should be believing with serving and delivering the type of service that we should be receiving. Pre-COVID, we were already on what I call a slippery slope when it comes to hospitality, customer service, respect. And then post-COVID, where we are now, it's off the chain. I mean, everybody's rude. Everybody's short-tempered, short-fused. Everybody's ready to blow up. I mean, we just have a short fuse. Nobody wants to give what I call great customer service. Call your doctor's office right now. Call an event center. Uh, get on the phone with someone else on the other phone, a human. Uh, try to make an appointment. Whatever you try, whoever you're talking to, they're on the phone. Their route is all outdoors. So it's nothing about customer service. As a matter of fact, we should change that name. It's not customer service. It's customer neglect, customer abuse, customer abandonment. That's what it becomes, customer disrespect. And we're putting up with it. We go out to all these restaurants and places to eat and 
and enjoy and because nobody wants to cook. Everybody's out now. <laughs> nobody wants to be in the kitchen. And so uh, we're one hour, two hour lines waiting to, to get a meal and we're all complaining. And, and the thing about it is we're paying our money and we're still going. And they only have two waiters or two servers because nobody wants to work. And we're still sitting there and we're, we're being disrespectful to the waiters. And we know it's not their problem. Uh, it's the management problem, but we're trying to get on them. You see, there are ways to treat people the way you want to be treated. That's why I say your family is your customer. And so when you look outside of your family, your neighbors, your community, those are your customers as well. And you should treat them. You should talk to them with dignity and respect the way you talk to Jesus. That's where we should be. That's the headspace you should be in. That's where we all should be in. We're told, man, that we should pray without ceasing. We should pray and not faint. And fainting simply means that when you start abusing your wife verbally, that's fainting. When you abuse your children verbally, that's fainting. When you abuse yourself verbally, because some of you talk to yourself in such a terrible way, that's fainting. When you start abusing your community, when you just start talking around people with foul language, that's fainting. When you're an absentee father, an absentee mother, that's fainting. When you abandon your family, that's fainting. When you're using drug and alcohol, abusing it, that's fainting. When you're gambling all your money away before you come home, that's fainting. See, that's where we are. And we live in a community where the community is fainting when it comes to respect, when it comes to respect to one another. But when you're praying to Jesus, that's the way you should get up off of your knees and you should pray to, and you should believe and you should respect everyone else. As a matter of fact, you know, if you, if you have a second language, a foreign language, you speak uh, Spanish or French or whatever you might speak. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. And that's the same thing with respecting and talking with and talking to your family and friends. If you don't use that same type of language that you talk to Jesus, you'll lose it. Some of you have lost it a long time ago. And you make statements like, well, it's just the way I am. No, it's not just the way you are. But it probably just the way you feel. <laughs> but it shouldn't be. You should be more like Jesus. We talk about being more like him, wanting to be more like him. We pray about it. We go to church every Sunday wanting to be more like him. And we find ourselves being less like him every single day because we won't use his language. Because we feel like, well, if I talk to her with so much respect, she's not talking to me with respect. I mean, so, so I'm not going to give her the, the respect of doing that. And all you're doing is disrespecting yourself. Because the more you talk like Jesus, the more you sound like Jesus, the more that's being pushed back into you, the more you're receiving versus giving. Yeah, the more you speak it, the more it's coming back into you. So you're being blessed by it. See, you thought being rough and tough was the right way to go. Well, guess what? That's, what's, that's why your life is so rough and tough, because that's what you're pushing out into the world. You're pushing out a hard core person versus a gentle, respectful, a person who has confidence, a person who don't take no mess, but a person who ain't trying to give no mess. But I'm speaking to you out of respect, not of love. That's the way you should speak to everyone around you. The more you speak to people, the more you should speak to them without being offensive. And the more you listen to people, the more you should listen without being defensive. It's time to leave people dignity intact when you have a conversation with them. Some of you are just killing people with your mouth. I pray that from this day forward, when you get to listen to this conversation, I pray you get up and you go out and you start talking to people, talking to your children, talking to your husband, talking to your wife, talking to your parents, <laughs> talking to your peers at work, the way you talk to Jesus, the way you want them talking to you. You have a blessed day. And just remember, there's more of us than it is of them. We just have to connect, be united, and be ready for the fight that's coming, the fight of politeness. Can you do that for a season? Can you talk to someone today the way you talk to Jesus? Be blessed.